Well, I'm loving the show so far. Oh, <laughs> really. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so I'm going to begin. I mean, obviously, as you can tell from my accent, I'm British. So obviously, I, I grew up remembering very much so the, the 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 cultural kind of impact that the uh, Russell T Davies's Queer's Folk had over here. Uh, can you just tell me a little bit about that first meeting with Russell in in Manchester and and totally, and, yeah. And, and, and yeah, and how that all went? <laughs> yeah, I was in London working on another project, and I just found that the rights had reverted back to Russell, and I was like please I'm here, let's set it up. So my, my reps and Russell's reps connected. And the next day I was on a train in Manchester and we met in that, like, you know, that's strange studio city or city thing in Manchester. Do you, I don't know if you're, are you in <laughs> London or I'm in London. We, I, I rarely okay. venture North. <laughs> okay. There's this, like, anyway, it was this huge complex, a glass building and in it, was the Babylon sign, like the actual UK British Babylon sign was up against the wall. And it was like, so incredible. <laughs> and we took our meeting in this like weird boardroom um, that like had the sign like through the glass. <clears throat> and so um, Russell, um, it was like a huge idol for me. I like, I love his work. I really connected like you with the British version um, as well. And so I pitched him my take. I had, you know, I knew it was going, I knew what it, I wanted it to be about. I knew the energy behind it. I knew, I knew I didn't have everything figured out, but I, um, I knew what the season was going to be about. And so um, I pitched it to him and he um, loved it and saw it as a way to expand on the legacy of his show. And so mm -hmm. he gave me the rights and, but he was just like, I don't know. It was just a very real conversation. It wasn't like a big formal sort of pitch. It was like me just leveling with him and being like, this is why we need as a culture need it now, not just like me as the rights, but like the power that that show had back then it changed my life. And I think it has the opportunity to do the same now for, for more people. Mm -hmm. Well, they say never meet your heroes, but maybe there's an exception <laughs> in oh, this case. Yeah. In this yeah. case, I, I would disagree. <laughs> was Russell involved much from there on? I mean, in just in terms of the kind of, I mean, obviously gave the blessing, gave the rights, but when, when you, and it, you, you started really creatively taking it on and creating your own thing, how, how much was Russell involved from that yeah, point? Yeah, Russell was very involved early as I was like developing the pitch, writing the pilot and the second episode. Um, Russell was giving notes um, and just really helping me like shepherd me and like, getting it set up and getting it to green light. Um, and then he very generously was just like, he, I think he really just loved what we were doing with it and gave us the rain. Like after he saw, saw the pilot, he gave me the biggest gift, which was just like, he just said like, it's yours. Like it is a, such a new show. It is so completely yours. Take it now and run with it. And that for me, someone who, <laughs> has crippling anxiety um, uh, and was really, I really care about like his feelings around it. It was, it was like the biggest gift he could have ever given to support us in the direction that we were taking the show. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering how you go about sort of you. You mentioned obviously how important it was to bring the, this story into the into the modern world and reflect the kind of contemporary kind of the, the LGBTQ community. I was wondering how much you think the community has changed in in that in those kind of couple of decades, and and also if the fact that attitudes around it have changed, and if that has an impact on 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 the narrative and the character kind of traits and actions that that we see in your version. Totally. I mean, LinkedIn was not sponsoring Pride when I was <laughs> uh, when I was in uh, elementary. School school let me tell you that i mean everything has changed i mean queer being queer is now an advantage i think whereas it used to be something that would ostracize you not just not longer like in my lifetime um and i think like i'm so grateful for that the next generation now not everyone it's it's i think it's naive to think that everyone can live safely around the world as a queer person but i think that there's there's been a um in some regards a lot of positive change and still so many backslides as we have seen now across the country with horrible transphobic homophobic policies but i i think all positive change is always like met with resistance and it's happened. This pendulum has always swung throughout history. Um, and it just is a sign that we just need to keep 
fighting, I think, for that positive change. And I think in a weird way, like Queer's Folk as an entity sort of like comes up when it's needed, you know, when I, when it's, when it's needed most, at least that's what it felt. I, it came out when I needed it most. That's when, that's when it existed um, back then for me. But now I think we're in such a fraught time in terms of queer existence that um, we're still fighting for basic human rights. And that's shocking to me, truly, honestly, did not think we would be here right now, even five years ago. Uh, I thought the the way that the authenticity of the the cold culture and community was wonderful, and I mean, you know, and I mean this in a sort of compliment. But one of the best things I can say about these characters is that some of them are dicks. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> they're not always. It, it's they're they're flawed. They make mistakes. They can be unlikable. I mean, how important was it for you in putting this together that it was showed that the gay it, it celebrated the the gay community, but it didn't gloss over anything. It was a very authentic portrayal of 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 that whole world. Totally. I mean, that was the intention from the get go with us. Like, we did not like this show was never going. To to be um, educational. <laughs> um, we're not trying to be role models. Um, we are trying to, to provide a space for queer people to in this show to be authentic and messy and selfish and uh, flawed and human and still lovable. Because I think that's a, that those are traits that we often give and have seen so many times over and over with our our you know, our Tony Sopranos or Don Drapers, um, Heisenbergs, like we've, we've, we've afforded that space to like cis straight white men, um, for, you know, I can't forever, I guess, um, in storytelling. Um, but I think having complexity, complex queer characters is really the next step. Um, and that's what Queers Folk did back then too, is it had that unapologetic punk energy, um, where we, it wasn't trying to educate you about anything. It was, it was showing you like it was. And I, that's, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do now with this show. Of course, it, it sort of begins off the back of, of a tragedy. And I just wanted to talk about honouring the, the victims and the survivors of the, of the Orlando shooting. Am I right in thinking you had some survivors be consultants on, on yeah. this show? And how, how important was it? I mean, it's such a sort of sensitive ground. But I mean, to, to show, to not just kind of look back over that, but to show the kind of strength in the community as well, yeah. to overcome a tragedy like that. Was that a really important aspect? to, totally. to highlight? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I mean, obviously, our show is fictional and, and um, you know, set in New Orleans and Pulse was a very specific event that targeted the Latinx community in Orlando, but the resilience that really came out of, uh, like the, the the way that that moment really transformed Orlando is really the crux of what we're doing um, with, with our show in the ways in which the community kind of rallied and came together as a result of something so unimaginably horrific. Um, and um, our... Um, you know, our show never, as you probably know from seeing, like we never show the shooting, we never see the shooter. It's not that story. We don't, we don't need any more of that in our lives. This show is really about rebuilding and how we rebuild in a way that's bigger, better, safer, and more inclusive in maybe the spaces that existed before it. And you mentioned New Orleans. I mean, I, I went there a couple of years ago and it's got this mm-hmm. vibrancy and it's, it's unlike anywhere else I've ever been to, not just totally. in, in the world, never mind in, in, in the States. I mean, why did you choose that particular place and how much did that impact the story you were telling? Because I know every kind of state and every city has quite nuanced, different um, queer communities in, in, that within them. So I just wondered how it impacted and enriched the narrative. You think that? Totally. I mean, it, it, New Orleans was the only city I really that, I felt like we could set Queer's Folk because of its specific, its unique specificity and its resilient queer scene. Like it's just so, I mean, it's the liberal, liberal oasis in the deep South. It has a greatest intersection of, of queerness, class, privilege. Um, um, and, and it's, it's like a, it's a part of the queer community, global queer community that we just really don't get to see that often because it, you know, when you think of New Orleans, a lot of people either think, you know, obviously bounce, but also the tourism and the Mardi Gras and stuff like that, which is a part of our show. Obviously we have an episode in Mardi Gras, but it's, it's the, 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 the underbelly of New Orleans that we're, 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 we're the, the drag scene, the queer scene, the like, um, that we really wanted to highlight because it's just so unique and vibrant and um, yeah. And great food too. And just very, very quick. Yeah. Like, oh, have, have you, food. <laughs> any thoughts of season two yet? Well, when does that, when do those conversations start? 
I mean, that's, that's not a question for me, but I mean, we're certainly thinking a lot about it right now. Brilliant. Well, fingers crossed. Maybe by then we might be able to do an interview like this in person. Who knows? Yes, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Stephen. Best luck with yeah, the series. Thank you. Great to meet you. You too. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? Indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.